You don't get a lot of chance to uh, see other optometrists work. No, you can. In this video, you'll see how important it is to maintain patient confidence and how errors are made when we feel under pressure to get the job done. Welcome back. Please subscribe to my channel, then you'll be notified when I make my next video. You can comment below and remember to give a like if you enjoy it. I'd really like to get your feedback, so don't be shy. In this video, you'll see our Optom using great techniques to make the patient feel better at the start of the refraction. You'll also see how the pressure of keeping patient confidence can lead to errors later on in the refraction. Let's run the video. To set the scene, uh, this is an elderly gentleman with mixed astigmatism. He's been seeing our optometrist for many years. So we are just starting the right eye after retinoscopy. Yeah. Um, can you get the one in the middle? Where the yeah. line go first? Easy, easy. Good. And I can get the one at the bottom. Bottom, that's good, that's good. Is that a GHVK? This is nice, asking, can you get the one in the middle? Our optom knows that the patient can see more, but asks him to read an easy one in the middle of the chart. This makes the patient feel better as a nice, easy place to start the refraction. Uh, he even reads out the bottom line without being asked to, uh, which is a very nice outcome for our optom. Let's continue. Because you can already get that, I'm going to go on to the very small ones. The ZTHVK is still there. Yeah. If you look at that line, and maybe just the one underneath. R N O T Z. Do you think it's better with the extra billion? Or if I just take it out, take it out. Good, good. Um, I have this extra one. I want to know if you can see more letters or if it's just a bit darker. That's with it in. And that's without it. Is that a mighty cross core? That's fine. When it's close, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, it. Um, don't worry. I speeded that bit up a bit. Uh, our Optom's retinoscopy was obviously brilliant. I'm not sure about that comment about if it's close, it doesn't really matter. But let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Let's see what happens next. If you look on the top right, where those circles are. Yes. Do you think it's better with number one? Why did he do that? That was a very interesting move, wasn't it? I'll show you that again so you can uh, enjoy it. If you look on the top right, where those circles are. Yes. Do you think it's better with number one? Before he starts the cross sill axis routine, uh, he twists the axis away from the current position. The patient is seeing very well, as you remember. That means the sphere and the sill must be nearly correct. If the first cross sill axis presentation was done leaving the axis as it is, at 70 in this case, the likely response uh, from the patient is going to be the same, or he's going to struggle to make a decision making him feel insecure and worried that he's making the right decisions. As this is the first use of the cross sill in the first eye, our patient needs to be trained up to do the cross sill in a nice positive way, showing a, a choice with a definite difference he is going to get a good response from him. If we give easy choices, we get happy, confident patients. Let's see what happens next. Or number two. Number two, clearly. Good. One. Or two. Two again. I thought he was going to rotate to 90, but 80 is a good move. Shame it wasn't all that's needed. Uh, doesn't look like the axis is 70 after all. Let's see. One. Or two. Two again. We do already know the answer to showing the cross sill at 80. Not sure why we haven't stopped. We've got the answer, it's 85. Let's see what happens now. Now the point's to try and get it so it's about the same, but be as yeah. big as you can. The Tom is clearly getting a bit tetchy here. Uh, I don't like this comment about getting it the same. I think it's leading the patient, which I don't like. And really, it's not the case that we're trying to uh, get them to be the same. We're just trying to bracket the axis. Trying to get it the same leads to much longer refractions, in my opinion. Bracketing is a much better way to do it. We already know that the axis is 85. We've seen that. 
when we did the cross sill at 80 he said go up and 90 he said go down so the job's done it's 85 let's see what happens now time is running out that's one yeah that's two close closer now okay, so mm, just too one. marginally too much all right there's one or two one perfect one. Yeah, you're one. good at that did you notice that I'll, I'll play it again that's one yeah that's two Close, closer now. Okay, so mm, just too one. marginally, too much. All right, there's one, or two, one. Perfect. Yeah, you're good at that. The patient said go up from 80, but because our optom is under pressure, he re rotates the axis before the patient gives his answer. We got 80 instead of 85. It's not going to matter much in the prescription, I suppose. Although our optom did tell the patient he was trying to get it the same. He wasn't able to achieve that, was he, though? He had to accept a bracketing technique anyway, which I think is the best way of doing it. Remember, we do have the luxury of being able to start and stop the video. We're not the one who might lose the patient's confidence as our optometrist is, so it's much easier for us. So there you have it, lovely work really, patient confidence maintained, prescription a bit off, but he won't notice, especially as I think the previous RX was 70. Let's have a look at it speed up a bit. Yeah, um, can you get the one in the middle? Yeah, I can get one in the bottom. Awesome, that's good, that's good. I like that one in the middle. But you can already get that, I'm gonna go to the very small ones. Is that THBK still there? Yeah. If you look at that line, maybe just the one underneath. R, M, O, T, Z. Do you think it's better with the extra bit in? Or if I just take it out? Take it out. Good, good. Um, I'm going to add the extra one. I want to know if you can see more left or if it's just a bit darker. That's with it in. And that's without it. Without it. Not very close call. That's fine. Yeah. It's close, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, um, yeah. Don't worry. If you look on the top right, where those circles are. Sure, yes. about that. Do you think it's better with number one? Or number two? Mm, number lovely two. move, good. yeah. One. Or two. Two again. One. Two. Two again. And the point to try and get it to so about the same, but be as big as you can. That's one. Yeah. I don't like that. Close. Close enough. Okay, so just remind you. Remind you. Right, there's one. <laughs> two. One. That's it. You're good at that. Um. I hope you enjoyed that. So, to sum up with some clinical pearls, try to make the choices you give the patient easy, especially at the beginning of the refraction, whether by showing halves or twisting the axis as our opton did. Bracketing. The cylinder axis gives shorter refractions. There's no need to get it the same as we're often told. If our optom had followed this rule, he would have had a better time. Leading the patient doesn't help. And of course, be patient yourself. Patient indecision is your fault, not the patient's. You should give choices that are easy enough to see the difference. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, please subscribe to my channel. Then you'll be notified when I make my next video. See you next time.